Hello guys and welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to check the ZTAG drone laser tag system. In this video I'm going to go over its features and specs, show you how to install it on a quadcopter and set it up. Of course this video is not going to be complete without a demo, so soon I hope to gather some friends and show you how it works. First of all, in case you wonder what ZTAG is about, the people behind it have a vast experience with the traditional laser tag game, and after being introduced to the drone racing world, they decided to provide us with a similar experience in order to make things more interesting and maybe create a new type of sport. The ZTAG drone laser tag system is based on an all-in-one board that is going to be placed on the front side of the quadcopter, slightly underneath the FPV camera, and mounted using a 3D printed mount which you can either purchase separately or 3D print by yourself. On the back side of the board you can find VCC and ground pads which are used for powering it up. The supported DC input voltage is between 5 to 28 volts and in case you are going to power it using a 5V BEC, it needs to provide the board with at least 1A. Next you can find TX and RX pads, which are currently not in use and they are reserved for a future usage, and then LED 5V and ground pads, which are used for connecting an LED strip that is going to reflect the LEDs that are located on the front side and the back side that indicate your health status, so it's going to help your opponents and also team members to read your health status. The board also features a USB Type-C connector that is used for updating its firmware. On its side, on the back side, you can find an IR receiver, and on the front side, you can find a pretty loud buzzer, three buttons that are used for setting it up, and four IR emitters. In terms of packaging, as I mentioned before, the 3D printed mounts are optional and inside its box, along with the ZTAC board, you are getting two 19cm long 24 gauge silicon coated wires and a 6S balance plug that is going to make it easier for transferring the ZTAC system between your drones in case you don't want to power it up directly from the battery leads or from the BC of your flight controller. In terms of weight, the ZTAC system is not very heavy and the board itself weighs 7.1 grams. Including the 3D printed mounts, the total weight is 18.8 grams and if you are going to add the balance connector and the battery leads, the total weight is 21.5 grams, so your 5 inch drone is going to barely notice it. Now after this quick introduction, let's go over the basic setup procedure. Once the board is powered up, you have 3 seconds before it enters pit mode to reset it to its factory settings by short pressing button A. You can set the IR sensitivity to low, medium or high by short pressing button B and you can enable domination mode which means that your color is going to be changed to the color of the enemy that tagged you by short pressing button C. When the LEDs next to buttons A, B and C are flashing, it indicates that domination mode is turned on and in case they are solid, it indicates that it is turned off. Once the board is powered up, after entering pit mode, you'll be able to set the color of your team to one of five options by long pressing button C and as a color blind person, I can tell you that it's pretty easy for me to distinguish between most of these colors. You can also set your initial health status by short pressing button C, so you can set it to 20%, 40%, 60%, 80%, and 100%. Long pressing button B is going to enable you to adjust the brightness of the LEDs depending on your lighting conditions, and that's a great opportunity to mention that the Zeta game is not meant to be played at full daylight as the IR sensors are not going to work properly, so it is designed mainly to be played indoors or outside when the light is not very strong. Short pressing button B is going to enable you to read your score. The top LEDs indicate the kills, hits, damage dealt, damage taken and deaths, and you can move between these five options by short pressing button C or button A. 
The LEDs next to buttons A, B, and C indicate the score, and A indicates hundreds, B tens, and C single units, which means that if currently this LED is flashing and the LED next to B flashes twice and next to C flashes once, your total kills is 21. Finally, long pressing button A is going to start a launch sequence where the game is going to be started after 20 seconds and synced between all the nearby units and if you'd like to start the game immediately, you can do so by long pressing it. So now I've got two nearby units and I can start the game by short pressing button A. You can see that these two units are synced and after 20 seconds the game is started. The tagging procedure itself is proximity based and happens from the back, as you can see in the following footage. So overall, considering that I still need to test it out, which hopefully again is going to happen soon on an upcoming video, I think that the ZTEC system is very interesting, it's going to help to spice up the game, and in case you have some FPV friends, I think that you are going to have some fun using it. Keep in mind though that this is not something that you can use on your own, so you need at least one opponent, and in order to make the most out of the system, you'll need to use it with an HD system, although it is of course compatible with analog builds. Anyway, that's going to be it for this quick video. In case you have any questions about the ZTEC system, feel free to ask them in the comment section down below. Don't forget to leave a thumbs up if you like this video, and consider subscribing to my channel and hitting the notifications bell if you're not already subscribed. See you on my next videos, and goodbye.